This program contains views and opinions that may not be suitable for all audiences. Audience discretion is advised. Welcome to Constructive Deconstruction, everybody. I know we missed out last week, but everything in the goddamn world decided to just explode upon us. I uh, mean, we had Misha getting sick. And we also had Holly being you were you were like what stuck in Chicago with no internet or something? Yeah, yeah, I'm moving the last of my stuff out of Chicago, and I already had the internet turned off there. So yeah, and then I got stuck because it snowed for like three days straight. Yeah, so it was like, and and that ended up, I don't know if it was that or if the combination of that and then Skype not not being nice, and also pushed Thespian talk back a bit. Cause it's like, yeah, because it was like, you could see me online, but the, your messages weren't going through. And yeah. so then I didn't get your messages until like four days after you sent them. Yeah, I was thinking it was three days. This is, four makes it sound so much worse. <laughs> Point is, wow. they weren't going there right away. Oh, yeah, I guess it was three days. Yeah. Well, no, because I got some of your messages on Monday, too. Ah, I didn't get all of them on Sunday. Okay. Because obviously so, I didn't get the thespian talk ones, so. Winter sucks. Man, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so and, done. And, and of course, uh, for last week when Misha, Misha had gotten sick and before I knew Holly had been stuck without internet, we were going to have somebody sit in for Misha. Her name is uh, Danny. Okay, remind me how to pronounce your, 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 uh, your second name there. It's Danny Amigurumi. Yes. And as you can hear, we have Danny Amigurumi on the show because because I said, you know, what? we're gonna we're gonna have you on the show anyway, and and I don't want to want to like just like toss you over here just to, just because or whatever. So you you're our special guest this week. Oh, thank you. So so it's a, it's a first for this show. <laughs> uh, but uh, but but why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, Danny, before we head on into our main topic for this week? Okay, well, I'm a 24-year-old Kentucky person. I most, I'm most i just basically a crochet artist who had the balls to approach uh, somebody I admire on Twitter and be like, hey, I love your show, and then he followed me back. I was like, I squeeze so hard, only dogs in other states can hear it. Ha. <laughs> Aww. And... And you also, in, with the crocheting stuff you do, I notice you have a, looks like what, a joltic on your shoulder? Yes, that is a joltic on my shoulder in my Skype picture. Yes. <laughs> she does Pokemon. I, I believe you've also done an Umbreon. Uh, yes, I have crocheted an Umbreon before. I actually have two different patterns. One looks a lot more like how Umbreon actually looks in the Pokemon show. The one I did is more chibi-fied. Mm-hmm. That's that is either way. It's Umbreon. It's awesome, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh god. So um, and I know I know you've done some like let's try type videos as well. Yeah, it's mostly just because I get bored, and we, me and my husband, we go to Asian food stores and stuff, and we find these weird things. And we found like the last one I did, we found one of the things that Hagen and Omega had tried, and I was like. I got to do it, and I got to tell Hagen, and she told me it was vile on Twitter, and I should have listened. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, so, so yes, now, now, that, now that we've got a little bit out of the way here, um, this week, since this is actually going to be released on Valentine's Day, happy Valentine's Day to everybody right now, um, we, we get to talk a little bit about that and the stuff around it. And the topic that I've been wanting to to talk about, we're gonna have to push that back next week because well, again, <laughs> yeah, again. I'm sorry, I swear. It's not your fault. Not your fault. Not totally. No. <laughs> but you know, it, yeah, I so honestly, when I started saying you know we record on Thursdays, I did not plan for it for a show to be released on Valentine's Day. Uh, but since it is, we 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 get to discuss it and things around it, and um. The day before we're recording this, I was on Snarcast with Misha and, and Megadaffy and all of them, and she touched a little bit on Valentine's Day. Oh boy! Or at least some of the more negative aspects of Valentine's Day, namely the fuckers that are stealing my fedora. Yeah, the douchebags. Yeah. Those guys. Yes. Mr. The the forever alone guys, especially the. <laughs> 
I'm celebrating Singles Awareness Day or Forever Alone Day, yeah. who are all, woe is me. I'm a nice guy, but yet I can't get a girlfriend because, you know, I'm totally entitled to one. Totally. Right. Yeah, you are entitled to a girlfriend like I am entitled to a free car. Sweet. <laughs> yeah, I wish I was entitled to a free <laughs> car. Or a lifetime supply of Lambic. Oh, hell yes. <laughs> which, which, um, um, you know, hint, if you really want to do something nice for me, that that would be nice, um, you know, lambic. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I, I don't even know what the what the legalities is for like sending uh, alcohol between states. So, I, I don't think it's legal. Yeah, which uh, you can, but it's just a pain in the ass. I'm yeah, sure. because of the way you have to package it. Yeah. But I will, I will say this. If anybody is out there and is like, hey, I want to get you some Lambic, just put it in the PayPal. I will take it out, and I will head to Panama City, Florida. That's the closest place I can get Lambic. And then you can so, have a Let's Try. Well, I don't need to have a Let's Try. I, I love Lambic. Oh. Well, I have three to... empty bottles of Lambic on my bookshelf right now. I don't even know what the hell Lambic is. It's Belgian fruit-flavored beer, basically. Ooh, sounds tasty. It is. It is. <laughs> Mm. Nice. It yeah. does sound good. I've been trying to find it. Closest thing I could find was Red's Apple Ale, and that stuff was delicious. I love Red's Apple Ale. Have you tried the Angry Orchard Cider? No, I haven't. I'm planning on it, though. I don't it's... know if I'll do a light try, but I'm trying it regardless. It's delicious. And they have, like, four or five different flavors, too. Sweet. Yeah. Oh, so... So this this topic, I'll I'll be honest, there wasn't much planning for this topic because it's like, oh shit, Valentine's Day. Let's talk about it. <laughs> um, you know, besides the douche bros, that we're gonna get to those later because I want to kind of start off on more of a positive thing anyway. Um, I I'm amused this year, at least for my own personal self, because this is the first year Valentine's Day has fallen and I'm actually in a relationship. It, it's kind of different. Granted, it's long distance. She's sitting up there in Chicago. You know, dealing with all the snow and shit, but mm -hmm. you know, we're, we're still in a relationship. It's still snowing here, by the way. Yeah, and, and I, yeah, it stopped for a little while, and then it started up again. And I have to go out in it tonight. Fuck my life. <laughs> uh, and let's see, me. We don't work. We're being gypped. We don't. We don't have any snow right now. We're well, Florida, so yeah. We and then there's like... that one day with the somewhat snow, and the kids were out of school, and it was like the apocalypse had happened. Mm. Pretty much. I mean, it's like, wow. And we didn't record. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and fun fact, there, there's like three of the kids are out sick right now. And uh, thankfully, they're they're a little quiet. Even the littlest one that I've went on Twitter and said, he's like a bully in the making. And that honestly does that disturb kid. me. Yeah, that yeah. honestly does disturb me a little bit. Uh, but that's that's a whole different topic. Yeah. But uh, thankfully, they're they're a little quiet. I'm I'm very glad. Uh, so back to Becky in the snow. Yes, Becky in the snow. <laughs> uh yes, and um, and I, I admit I I suck at getting like Valentine's Day gifts or whatever. I I will honestly admit that right here. Um, I I do you know whenever there is somebody special that I can share the sentiment with, I will. And yes, I, I Becky and I will most likely be doing something. You know something special even if it's just something over skype or whatever um but you know because like i said I, I i suck at buying things for most people because it's like do, would they really like it and if they like it how can they would they already have it you know that i sort feel of like any gift giving occasion is really difficult when you're in a long distance relationship because when you're you know with somebody every day you you know you get a better sense of what they like or what they might like than you know, just conversations over Skype. But yeah. it's called an Amazon wish list. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and not everybody Amazon has Amazon one, though. Oh. Yeah. A lot of the guys that I've dated haven't had one. Yeah. So I think it can, it can get sort of difficult. Yeah. Like Luke, I feel like the most gifts that I've ever given him have been food. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Yeah. I make I make stuff for my guys sometimes. Well, I don't think I've sent an, I don't think I've sent any baked goods to Jeff yet. Um, uh. but yeah, I will say this, uh, even though I'm one of my relationships is not long distance, 
I'm not going out on Valentine's Day. Do you guys know how fucking, like, seriously, the restaurants here will be... Pa- well, actually, I don't know about this year because it's, like, snowocalypse outside. Yeah. Or snowmageddon. And in, like, I don't know if a lot of people are going to be going out tomorrow or not, but usually the restaurants are fucking packed. And we either go the day before or the day after. So, yeah, Ben and Todd and I are all three. We're going to go out together and probably the day after, and then you can probably go see the Lego movie. There you go. And I, I already got my Valentine's Day pre- Well, two of my Valentine's Day presents. I got a, um, a Kevin Smith Fat Man shirt because he does a uh, podcast called Fat Man on Batman. Hmm. So I got that as a shirt, and I got a um, – it's a Supernatural necklace. It's uh, Dean's little FBI badge. With his fake name, John uh, J. Bonham, on it. Nice. And, and Todd's gotten me this whimsical... This, this is how freaking weird I am. A Nicolas Cage cat pillow. Mm. It's a Nicolas Cage cat, and it has a little decor- declaration of independence beside it. No! Yeah, and... Um, <laughs> not sure what Jeff's getting me, but... Yeah, I'm sure it's good. He'll probably sing for me. Yeah. And I got Aww. him... I think... I'm getting... I got him Pacific Rim... I got Todd a, a phone case and a, a sleeve for his tablet, and I got Ben wanted glow in the dark paint for his. Uh, he's doing a steampunk Green Lantern cosplay eventually. Oh, nice! Yeah. So yeah, yay mm. Valentine's Day. <laughs> yeah, and, and and if I'm if I'm like perfectly honest, yeah, you know, I, I made the crack about you know the lambic and the PayPal earlier. Honestly, the best thing anybody could ever really get me, you know, and this applies to like Christmas, birthday, or whatever, is you know money or a gift card, because a yeah, a job would work, a day job would work, <laughs> day job would work, but uh, but you know, outside of that, you know, gift card, you know, some money or whatever, because then I could go out and get something that I would like, and they don't have to worry about, oh my God, is he gonna like this? Is he gonna like that? Uh, uh, does he already have one of these? You know, again, it's called a wish list. Make yeah. one. I have one. It's probably outdated, though. <laughs> well, it's updated. I'm always updating mine because I'm like, when the hell did I put this on here? When the hell did I want that? What the fuck is this? <laughs> yeah. Well, but not everybody thinks in, 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 in terms of wish lists, though. Well, I'm a Virgo, so damn it. Listen to me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'm a good no. Virgo, so I'm like my husband, who he <laughs> might as well be Yeah. So there's... But yeah, oh god. Speaking of Virgos, Becky's a Virgo. Oh sweet, when's her birthday? Uh, September thirteenth. <laughs> Same day as Enigmas. That's <laughs> Incidentally, she also shares a birthday with one of my ex-girlfriends. Not 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 my most recent one, but uh, but she's met this ex-girlfriend and they seem to get along pretty well. Yeah, her birthday is literally a week after mine. Yeah, that's awesome. So I've thought. And by thought, I meant I. I mean, I spent like five seconds while we've been doing the show, and actually came up with this. Um, since I, I think all of us, well, I know uh, Misha, you have you know your three boyfriends. Danny, I know you're married. Uh, and, two and, boyfriends and married. Well, two f- boyfriends and a married. <laughs> yeah. I, I I know what I'm thinking is just the words are not linking up. Been and, married for six years. <laughs> yeah. And then Holly, you and I, we, you know, we have uh, Luke and Becky, respectively, and um, and so I'm thinking, okay, why not just take some time and tell some stories about how we met our significant others? Oh dear God! <laughs> oh, this is fun. This is you won't fun. believe me when I tell you how I met them. <laughs> oh boy! <laughs> but uh, but I'll go ahead and start off that way, you know, you know, because mine is relatively simple. It's um. Simply, I met Becky through uh, Dodger of Zion, one of her uh, Cards Against Humanity games. We got to talk and met her, talked to her a few times through the games, and then I was like, you know what? I just I like her enough because she impressed me enough with, with the games and everything and how she thinks. So I, I poked her on Skype, and we just started talking, started talking more and more, started doing calls more and more. And this was like a week or two before MAGFest, and, and we both found out we were going to actually be there. So we're like, okay, we're going to meet up. We're going to do this thing. We planned out a lot of stuff we had wanted to do with each other. And uh, we got to MAGFest, and we were practically inseparable. <laughs> I called it, too. I was like, I told Ben, or no, Todd, a few days before. I'm like, Gomer and I'm like, Gomer and Becky are going to start dating at MAGFest. Called it. Yep. 
Which is true. It's like that I first... put a lot of my friends' relationships, like me, he, and Tony. <laughs> like that first night, we did the you know uh, worst movie ever panel, where I read with John St. John and everything, and it was it was all fun. And already, you know, we were like you know like already snuggling a little bit there. The next the next morning, we were sitting there in the lobby of the Gaylord, and somebody's like, "Are you two dating?" And we just looked at each other, not no, not sure what to say, and then she just pipes up, "Yeah, yeah, I guess we are." So I said, sure. <laughs> oh. So it's just Aww. so and like I said, we were practically inseparable for all of Magfest. <laughs> How we did not get sick of each other is beyond me, but it's it's like that in the beginning, trust me. Yeah. Always. Always. Yeah. But it but it was a lot of fun and now we we talk, we we do our things over Skype and I'm trying to find some time and some money to to do some regular visits cuz it, it, it's just one of those things I think needs to, that that really should happen. I know those feels. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, I'm no longer driving trucks, so it's not as easy. So it's, the difficulty is a little up a bit. But so far, so far, so good. I'm I'm very happy and satisfied with her. How long has it been? Uh, I know you're you're counting days, aren't you? Because I know you. You're counting days. I'm not counting days at this. Lies. Point. You were such a not liar. A, not at this point. <laughs> but uh, but it's been a little over a month. That's it? Yep. Seems like longer. Weird. I know. It seems it seems so much longer, but it's it's just been a month. A little well, a little over. Wow. Yeah, since we officially started dating. So. And she's a really good artist and she's awesome and made me this awesome Kevin Smith commission and it's great. Yes, I am dating. Not only, not only she's a, is she a great artist, she is an award-winning animator. Cool. Yes, which she always demeans by saying, "Yeah, well, so is Chirpy." Oh my God. <laughs> which, which, oh God, bless her heart. I, I dragged her to see Chirpy for the reaction video. <laughs> oh, I, 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 yeah. That's a great start to a relationship, you know. Torture her with with um, a bird fucking a horse. <laughs> although, yeah. Although, although rap although, critic was trying to drag me. He's like, "Don't, don't make me go. I don't want to do this. I don't want to go alone." <laughs> yeah, like, poor guy. <laughs> oh, the poor guy. And I find it interesting. I've been in two of Diamanda Hoggins' videos so far, and in both of them, Lewis Lovehog has appeared. <laughs> it's like it's like can you get me in a video without Linkara next time? <laughs> no, I I'm, I'm I'm kidding. Link, Lewis is Lewis is a great guy. But um Oh god. So uh that that's pretty much my thing. Um uh Holly, why don't you go next? Okay. Well, I will preface this by saying that I I don't really know what Luke and I are right now, <laughs> but um that said, you know, he's probably the closest person to me um, and the most imp- important person in my life. But we actually met through Twitter. Um, I went in for surgery, um, emergency surgery to have my gallbladder removed. And uh, somebody said something on Twitter about how I was going in for surgery and to send me love. And so he sends me a heart. Just, you know, a little less than three on Twitter. And I was like, oh, that's weird. Some guy I don't know. <laughs> um, and then he starts talking to me on Twitter one night when I was like, uh, I just need to cuddle. And he's like, yeah, you and me both. And I was like, well, I'm ready anytime you are. You know, it, just thinking like it's a fan and not really thinking twice about it. And he tells me that he's in Toronto. And I was like, oh, okay. Uh, he's like, are you coming to Con Bravo? I was like, uh, no, nope. I pretty much only go to conventions where they can pay for me to show up because <laughs> yeah. I don't have that much money. Mm-hmm. And he was like, oh, well, are you going to MAGFest? And I said, yes. And so we made a cuddle date for MAGFest 2013. <laughs> a cuddle date? Um, I like this. Yes. Yeah. So I, it may have been a snuggle date. I, I don't remember the exact term we used, but yeah. So uh, then we, he starts talking to me more and more often on Twitter about, you know, different producers in terms of like Con Bravo because he runs a guest apartment. And then we started moving the conversations to Skype. Um, 
and then I don't remember exactly how it started, but I said something about, uh, like, what his girlfriend would think or she would beat me up or whatever. Um, and he was like, well, I kind of think that you're my girlfriend if you want to be. <laughs> yeah. I think of you as my girlfriend if if you want to be. I was like, Aww. okay. He's like, does that mean we're boyfriend and girlfriend now? I was like, uh, yeah, I guess so. That is, that is oh God, I, I have the diabetes. That's so sweet. <laughs> <laughs> my teeth hurt. Yes. That's so sweet. Yeah. Luke, if you're listening, you're a sweetheart, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so yay! Oh, yeah. So, so, um, so is that it, or, or is it, do we have? Yep. Do we have Misha ready with oh, all boy. three of hers? Oh, geez. okay. <laughs> you, okay. Well, for those of you who've been listening long enough, you're not gonna believe where I'm at. Ben, I'm at Ben at church. Yeah. Um, I used to be a Southern Baptist and I went to a Southern Baptist church and, uh, Ben's family, their missionary family, they're, they're, they're actually still missionaries in Amman, Jordan with the Iraqi refugees and they were on furlough. Well, Ben's parents and sister, he has two sisters and Ben had come back, Ben and his one sister had come back, uh, on this furlough, they were starting Liberty University. And so I met, like, his parents spoke in my Sunday school class. Uh, we took them out to lunch afterwards in Sunday school class. And Ben kept staring at me. And I'm just like, what the fuck? This guy's weird. Et cetera, et cetera. But then, like, I don't know. I guess, like, I started seeing him more Sundays. And I really got along well with his sister, Kathy. She knew that I liked him from, like, that September until, like, shit when i finally told him in march that i like that of uh, the next year that i liked him or whatever but anyway we started hanging out more and more he fixed my computer and then my computer broke and then he helped me get fa- buy, buy another computer and we hung out and finally i got sick of waiting around and i told him that i liked him two weeks later he told me that he liked me or a week later and then two weeks after that the day after easter i asked him if he was ever gonna fucking ask me out <laughs> Except for I didn't drop an F bomb because I was a little Christiany Christian. Oh, yeah. Um and he said he was planning on doing it the day before, but his sister was there because they we invited them over for Easter because of course his parents were back in the mine and they didn't really have anywhere to go for Easter. So that happened. And so we started dating in April of that year. We got engaged in September and then we were married that following January. Wow. Yeah. Fast it, I mean we were going to plan a whole wedding or whatever, but then we didn't, like, I left Liberty and we didn't really want to be apart that much, and I realized how expensive weddings were, and I was like, you know what, we'll just get married in my living room, it was on, in, in my living room, my parents' living room, on a Monday in January, <laughs> the, the same day that our online classes started that semester and the first night of American Idol. But oh, wow. <laughs> I remember all that from that night. Yeah, and my, my uncle, he's a judge, and he married us. And I don't think his parents are ever going to let me let us live it down because they weren't here. Mm-hmm. But they're really, they're not nice. And also, when we were planning on getting married, was that October anyway? And they they don't like me. Um, even when I was a Christian, I wasn't Christian enough. <laughs> oh, and, those kind of people. Yeah, so they didn't really like me, and they don't really like me now, especially his dad. Um, they probably would have been like, no, you need to change your wedding. Because they were telling us when we couldn't have our wedding because it was this person's birthday and that person's anniversary. And I'm like, uh, well, we'll get married whenever we want. They're probably mad, too, because uh, our wedding anniversary is the day before his dad's birthday, but I don't care. <laughs> um... Gave him a good, good, good birthday present that year, but like I said, it mm. wouldn't have mattered. That nothing's ever good enough for those people. Yeah. But uh, Ben and I've been married for six years. Yay! Uh, that's all last month. Um, Todd. <laughs> oh boy. Um. <laughs> oh dear. Um, I have a friend, a former friend, through another my former best friend named Stevie, and uh, she had Todd on her friends list. And we were all bitching about the same people on Hell's Kitchen one night. 
And it seemed like every week, Stevie would post something on Hell's Kitchen, and we would all three of us would gather on there and bitch about the same people in Hell's Kitchen. And afterward, Todd just decided to add me on Facebook, and we started talking. And we he inter- uh, by the way, I'll never forgive him for it, but he introduced me to the Reviewerverse, Todd. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, nah, I met a lot of great people through the Reviewerverse, even though I've had some interesting experiences. Uh, but we ended up. Being and I was I was I was honest with Ben from the Diego about it. That Todd and I were kind of FWBs online, and then uh, we met. Uh, so that we met in August of that year. That was 2011, and then we met in person at Magfest. He's the one who told me about Magfest. So I met him in person at at Magfest 2012. Um, yeah, Magfest I was at that. <laughs> and yet I still haven't met you. Um, mm-hmm. And no, no, tw- yes, 2012. That's right. I, I'm trying to remember all the stuff, but uh, yeah. anyway, uh, and by the way, at the time, uh, uh, Todd had been dating a girl named Lee, uh, and they'd been together for like 11 years, and she's super long distance. Her relationship was kind of interesting, very long distance, and they only <laughs> saw each other like one or two times a year at all. And they had got, they hadn't seen each other in two years for different reasons, and it was kind of complacent or whatever. But anyway, basically, uh, in my friend Denise at the time, well, at the time she was my friend, uh, she, and she's Polly, and she and I were talking one night, and she was like, "You do realize you're in a relationship with Todd, right?" And I'm like. I guess I am, and I asked Todd or Ben what he thought about it, and he's like, basically, you might as well call it what it is, and I'm like, you're okay with it, and he's like, yep. So, we, Todd and I, we officially started dating on June 6th, which is funny for us, because that's our favorite voice actor's birthday, Les Johnson's birthday, and it's also D-Day, we joke about it, because we fight a lot, we, we used to fight a lot. Um, so... And he and his girlfriend eventually broke up, so now I'm the only one dating Todd. And again, we've been together since June 6th of 2012. Yeah. Yeah. Like, officially together. Sweet! And, yeah, and I'm like, again, I'm the only one that's dating him. He can date whoever he wants if otherwise, but he doesn't want to. So, yeah. yeah. And, 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 if there's, and it, it, admittedly, I, I didn't mention this earlier, Beck and I are kind of in the same boat there, but Again, I really don't want to. So. Yeah. And then, Jeff. <laughs> Technically, I met Jeff through uh, through uh, Gomer. Yay! Technically. Uh, matchmaker, matchmaker, make me a match. I don't it, know how that tune goes. God damn it. It, it, it always I goes feel. back to Fiddler on the Roof, doesn't it? <laughs> um, I guess. But, uh, yeah. Technically, I, met, I did meet I did meet Jeff through Gomer, sort of, uh, because the first day you texted me, uh, I asked you what's up. You're like, oh, I just added someone else to the site, and I was like, and I was like, oh, who? And you said writer's block. I'm like, who the fuck is that? So that's technically the first time like I anybody had ever told me anything about him. I had, it, admittedly, I'd seen his picture on Facebook and thought he was cute, but never added him because his his profile, his on his religious views said Pentecostal, and I've had enough dealings with Pentecostals to know. However, it turns out he's not religious at all. So yeah, um, that that fits my my agnostic atheism well. Um, but anyway, uh, no, didn't know anything about him. Asked you who the hell he was, and uh, maybe a month or two later, uh, he's a wrestling fan, and he saw my tweets with Dresden and uh, Rosen Hacker and. Uh, he started replying to my tweets, started following me, added me on Facebook, started the poke war, because <laughs> that's how it always happens, a poke war. Uh, and he messaged me one day while I was trying to work on an uh, outline for Snarkast, probably. And he's like, he's like, awful lot of poking going on back and forth. I'm sitting there going, oh my god, another one of these guys. Basically, I thought it was Biohybrid 2.0. Or, oh. or judging by my life, like Biohybrid 1100.0. Jesus. Uh, but, because I know a lot of, I've, I've encountered a lot of creepers in my life. 
Um, and I started talking to him. I was like, oh, my God, I really need to get shit done. But then I started talking to him because he kept replying to stop a thread on Facebook. And we kept talking and finally and, and, and messaged him back. And we talked all day that day, all day the next day. Ended up on a Skype call with uh, with the hack pack. And, by the way, my initiation basically was reading a horrible WWE fanfic. <laughs> Don't ever read WWE fanfic, people. It's oh. terrible. Um, oh, I, and, got, I got roped into reading My Immortal with those guys once. I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, but I fixed their little, little red wagon. It was one about Triple H, uh, uh, HBK, and uh, Brock Lesnar and Paul Heyman, and I used my sexy voice, and I think I ruined them for life. Um, but anyway, probably a week later, uh, just Jeff and I started talking on Skype all the time. A week later, we were like, should we date? And we spent all night going over, should we date? Should we not? Should we? And then finally, we were like, okay, let's do it. Because we thought the long distance was going to be the, the hardest part. And it's never been a thing. Not really. Um, and I wait. it's so funny. I actually waited up all night until Ben woke up to ask him permission to date Jeff, too. And then tied. And then I found, and, he, and they both said yes. And then I went to sleep. Uh, and so, yeah, Jeff and I have been dating since, um, the 23rd of July. It's funny. And this is a funny story with us. Um, we were, of course, doing the whole getting to know you thing. And one of the things came up, have you ever broke a bone? No. And exactly one week later, one week later, I turned to Todd to tell him not to, to watch him walk walking in wet grass so he didn't slip and fall and break something. And then I slipped and fell and broke my goddamn ankle. Oh. Um, so that happened. Uh, but yeah, we, we broke up once, Jeff and I, because things got really complicated. We only lasted we only lasted breaking up a week, and then we got back together, and we've been great ever since. Um, he's coming to see me in 42 days, and I'm really excited. Yay! And you poke <laughs> at me for counting the days. I don't care. I have a... <laughs> I will, I will be perfectly She, she does honest. make an update, have, like, every day of how yeah. many days are left. I do. I have to actually have a countdown on my phone's home screen. I regret nothing. <laughs> oh, seriously, and you're barfing rainbows about me and Luke? Uh. <laughs> no! <laughs> uh, I, I will say, it is, it is nice to occasionally be the causer of diabetes every I, now and then. Oh, Jeff and I used to be so bad. Gomer, you remember, because, oh, yeah. like, Every day, people would be like, oh, my God, I'm going to cut off my foot because diabetes. Yeah. It's I mean, okay to put rainbows over each other's relationships. It's fun. Yeah. So, I mean, guys, I mean it's, like, guys it's like between me and Becky, you and Jeff, and, and Rose, and, and, and Miss Nightmare, and Dresden and Kixie. Oh, God, so much diabetes going around. All the diabetes. Yes. All of it. And now, <laughs> and now, because she hasn't, obviously, has not talked very much. Uh, we, we get to hear about Danny and, and her husband. This, I'm honestly curious. I've never heard this story. Oh, boy, is it a story. Because, like Misha, I used to be a Southern Baptist, or as I like to more lovingly call it, a fucking psycho-Christian. I call, I call myself a recovering SOB because Southern Baptist. Yeah. <laughs> Both apply. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, yeah, I actually met my husband back in high school. Aww. And we huh. we couldn't fucking stand each other. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> so how did that change? Um. Well, the first time we actually officially met, and I'm going to tell the joke he told that caused me to do, uh, he was way more perverted than he is now, and I was, I consider myself nowadays agnostic theist. At the time, I was psycho-Christian. But he told the joke, uh, Confucius say virginity like bubble, one small prick all gone. <laughs> that joke. Oh, that joke. Oh, dear. And me being psycho Christian at the time and having overheard this, and I had to jump to do this, I swapped him a good one on the back of the head. <laughs> <laughs> I like this story. First wow. time you met him, you hit him. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess you could say I was a little Cinderella or something. Hmm. But anyway, he looks, he turns around, looks behind him. Has to look down to see this little blonde chubby girl glaring up at him. If looks could kill or lobotomize. Oh dear. 
<laughs> but we eventually both cooled down about our little rivalry we had going because we discovered that we both were big fans of Spider-Man. Oh. And Sonic the Hedgehog. Sweet. So because we were like, well, we can't really hate each other if we both like two of the same things. So I guess oh we're just kind of... We're just like, eh, let's be friends. It's easier than being enemies. Yeah. Well, hey, and, you know, you know, whatever, whatever, whatever gets the peace going, you know? Yeah, so he would... Uh, check out Spider-Man comics from his local library and bring them to school so I could read them. Oh. Yay. <laughs> Wait, so we libraries just... lend out comics? That's awesome. Ours doesn't do that. Uh, at least the one out here where I live in Kentucky, I'm not going to say exactly where, but I, Obviously. I, live, in, yeah. I live in the sticks of Kentucky, I'll say that much. Mm-hmm. And luckily the library in our area of the sticks has a uh, trade paperback. Sweet. Oh, nice. I guess, I guess because there's a little bit of a high concentration of geeks here. I mean, we got our own little anime con going from the ground up. Oh wow. Yeah, G Psycon. <laughs> nice. But anyway, uh, we just we discovered both like Spider-Man and Sonic, so we started getting along. And I was dating somebody else at the time, so it was obviously just going to be you know me and him be friends. And then I had to change high schools because of district changes. Oh, no. And that caused the relationship I had at that time to end, but, you know, whatever. It wasn't really that good for me, and the guy... I don't wish him ill. I wish him the best in the world. I just never want to see his face again. Oh, uh, one of those guys. Oh, yeah. <laughs> one of the ones that makes your fedora look bad. Oh, no! Yeah. <laughs> well, used to. He's He's mellowed out, and he's actually become a feminist. Oh, good. So, he made a turnaround, but I still never want to see him again, because he broke my heart. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I, I think that's a little understandable. So, anyway, fast forward two years later, I'm selling jewelry at a local flea market, and I go to take a walk around to stretch my legs, because it was a slow day, and it was boring, and I was going bug nuts. And I walk into this one store that sells a lot of reproduction weapons, and I see Josh there. So I go up to him, and I say hi. I'm like, hey, remember me? And he goes, yeah, you're the girl who hit me, and then we became friends because Spider-Man, and I'm sorry, I don't remember your name, but I know it starts with a D. I was like, yes, it does. I'm Danielle, and I remember you're Josh, right? And he goes, yeah. So we just started talking, hanging out as friends, and... Then a few a month or two later, he asked me if I wanted to go see Weird Al in concert with him. Nice. Yes. I was like, oh, hell yes. And it was a straight out of Linwood tour and got to go to that and see uh, some, actually, here's, thanks to the concert, here's some Weird Al songs I hadn't heard before, like Want to Be Your Lover and stuff like that. Hmm. Let me, to per, for, quick side tangent, the performance for that song is hilarious. <laughs> and I also found Waldo while we were at that concert. Sweet. Oh my god. But anyway, uh, after the concert, we noticed that there's a big line of people by the tour bus that were like, "I think he's finding autographs over there. Let's go over there." So we, so me and Josh run over there. His friends, his two friends that came with him, were like, "We're just gonna go wait in the van because we're tired and we want to catch a nap while you two are doing your craziness." So we go, we get in the line, and I'm all excited, and I've, and the bass player, he pops out of the guitar, we get to talk to him for a second while waiting in line, and then we're like five or six people away from Weird Al, and I think it was just the excitement of, I got to meet the bass player, and I'm about to meet Weird Al, basically psyching me up to fess up to Josh that I had a crush on him. Hey! Hmm. <laughs> And no, no better place and, to do it. Yeah, and he kind of just reacted at first like, oh, that's cool. I think he was just psyched up about Weird Al as well. Mm-hmm. So we get our autographs, and then we go home. And then a week later, we're going to go see Hellboy 2, The Golden Army. And on our way to grab food before we go to see the movie, uh, he turns to me and he goes, were you serious about what you said last week about having a crush on me? 
I was like, <laughs> yeah. He goes, I have a crush on you. Do you want to just make it official enough to be boyfriend and girlfriend? Oh. Like, hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Aww. And, so and... We, became, we became a couple that day, and then Zach, in 2010, we made it official and got married. Yay. So you you've been married coming up on four years now. Yep. Sweet. We we got married a week and a day before Halloween. Nice. <laughs> we were originally going to get married in July, but things and stuff happened, and uh, just you know, bad things with the fact that my dad used to be a pop head happened, and uh. delayed, delayed, and delayed. So finally, we were told, you know. You're doing it in October, and that's about the only thing you're getting control over is what day in October it is, because you two are going to get married, damn it! <laughs> oh. <clears throat> so we set it for the Saturday before Halloween that year. Sweet. Yeah, I've, I've actually had friends who've gotten married on Halloween before, and I thought, at the time I thought, you're weird, but now I look back on it and it's like, you're cool. Susie and LC are getting married on Friday the 13th next year. That is awesome. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I've, I've actually had a friend get married. Uh, you know, she met the guy and then two months later, marry the guy. Oh, I had a friend who got married on Leap Day. <laughs> oh, goodness. See, if that were an option, I would totally do it. Because why not? Yeah. Like, yeah, they got married on a Friday. It is Leap Day. They're not together anymore, but yeah. I remember that wedding. I was like, that is so cool. Leap day. That is brilliant. <laughs> uh, best things you can do on leap day, get born, get married. Mm -hmm. The best, like two best things. Yeah. Uh, I, I have to wonder how dating actually works. You know, like, like, like age dating or, or anniversary dating, you know, since that only comes around every four years. I, I've, I've wondered how that works. Do they just count up one every four years or probably they... they celebrate on the 28th yeah that that's that was gonna yeah, be my most other people idea. just celebrate a day early or a day late yeah which makes sense in that case oh our calendar's fucked up <laughs> only a little bit just a little teeny tiny bit oh so uh so we've got the positives a lot of the positives out of out of the way took up a good chunk of the show which is good which is good because i i did want this to be a mostly positive thing and um, but because now you know we we've touched on it here and there, we've got about uh, a little over 17 minutes left before we have to get out of here. Let's talk the negatives, the fucking dude bros. Oh, uh, do you want to talk about the alternate <laughs> holidays first? <laughs> oh god, the goddamn alternate holidays. And and I will admit, I, and I and there is no pride in in what I'm saying. It's pretty much a matter of fact. I used to be. In, in this kind of a camp before, you know, bef before I got into, you know, you know, what, what, what people are calling the review of which I saw a tweet last night. I, I, I think Holly posted it. <laughs> yeah, that was me. Yeah. About, about how, you know, it's the, the uh, online, you know, uh, what, what was it exactly? The online uh, video making community is it, it, basically it's more than just, you know, video reviews out there. Right. I, yeah. I don't call it the review of us and I won't because there's more to. Yeah. I, I said online video content, but really it's just there's more to online content than video reviews. Right. Because, you know, here we are doing a podcast. Right. You know, there are people who write articles and these things aren't all reviews, you know, That's the videos true. aren't all reviews. And so we've sort of boxed ourselves into this corner as a community thinking that all new media is reviews. Right. And then, like, and then people get upset about the angry reviewing situation and it's like, right. Yeah. But if you're only going to talk about it as a review of first, then that's what you're going to get. Yeah. So yeah. it's much, much more than that. And, 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 you know, the online video community, online pr uh, production community, I guess I'll call it for lack of a better term at this point, you know, it could use a different name. Yeah. Like, and people, well, it, it is actually technically called new media, new media. No, yeah, that works. Although new media, I would think new would be like within the past year. This has been going on for a few no, years. No, but I'm, I'm also considered uh, anything online as opposed yeah. to old forms of media like the newspaper and TV and stuff like that. Right. Right. 
Though, though to be fair, I am splitting hairs with that one. So, <laughs> yeah, people get confused when they tell them I'm in the reviewer. So, like, what do you review? And I'm like, I don't. They're yeah. like, then why is it? Because that's that one review sites, and they're like, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I don't even call I don't even call my site a review site. It's pretty much just I've called it a conglomerate site because we've got people from. Pretty much everywhere. I mean, we've got Diamond de Hagen doing reviews, and, and now Lesbian Talk as well. We've got Lacey Green, who does the sex-positive videos. We've got article writers. Yeah, they do reviews, but then there are also the topical, more topical articles, which you, you do write, Misha. Yeah. Um, it's hodgepodge. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. And then you got me with my stuff, and you got Contact Let's Players. Gumbo. Yeah, and you got Let's Players. I do Let's Play videos. Spaz Fox does Let's Play videos. You know, that sort of thing. <laughs> I like how this conversation is totally derailed. Yes, it is now. <laughs> okay, okay. So, so anyway, regardless of what you want to call this community of online producers, um, you know, there are those, you know, just everywhere that want to take Valentine's Day and 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 not make it about you know lovey-dovey couples or whatever. And, and I'm not even counting the people that are anti-commercialism of Valentine's Day. And the people who say, you know, you should love each other every day of the year, mm. which is true. It is true. Yeah. You know, and those, but those are not the people I'm bitching at. You're talking about the people who want to piss on everybody's fun. Yes. The people that are like, oh, it's Forever Alone Day. Bruh. Singles Awareness Day. Yeah. Which, and yeah. then the Christians. So oh, the Christians. Oh, the fucking Christians. Oh, the National Day of Purity. Right. <laughs> because sex is terrible. It's so wrong. <laughs> this this I holiday. I've heard that one before. No, Holly. Here's here's my Liberty University thing. This oh, holiday actually started. Take a shot, at everyone. Yes, it started at Liberty University. I think by the dean of law. Yes, Liberty University. Let's laugh. Has a law school. A law and, school at Liberty University. And, and, pre- and, 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 and wait and wait 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 wait. Law dean is had, is responsible for starting up a day of purity. Yes. So and biblical it's, law. Okay. It's, it's, okay. You are. Thing. Hold on. Hold on. I, I've, I've got somewhere I'm going with this. If you are involved in law to the point where you could be the dean of a college and teach other people how to interpret and read and, and defend people under the law, you have no business declaring anything a day of purity. Well, because you are anything but pure, my friend. But Liberty University isn't a real university, in my opinion, so there's that. I mean, if it were, then more colleges would take their goddamn credits. But anyway. I don't know. There's Hamburger University. Oh, my God, Holly. <laughs> Get out. Get out. <laughs> <laughs> I, will, I will go on the record and say I think that Hamburger University is probably a more proper university than Liberty University. <laughs> probably right, too. Unless they're paid to the hamburger gods. I do I, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, anyway, uh, this guy—he's the dean. He's the dean of uh, law at Liberty, and he started up the National Day of Purity. And on the National Day of Purity, and Liberty University, obviously, they have a dress code, which is completely unbalanced because the guys have to wear uh, polo shirts at least, and pants, and um, and whatever. Girls can wear t-shirts though, and now they can wear flip flops, which used to not be a thing, actually. You used to have to dress up every day. But anyway, um, but on this day, the, 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 the dress code is relaxed, so everybody can wear plain white T-shirts to symbolize their, pu- symbolize their purity in the eyes of the Lord and to pledge their, to pledge their, their, their selves to abstinence until they're married. <laughs> and yeah. how quickly before somebody starts dousing the women in water? Because, yeah, and it's like, what if it rains that day? Oh, yeah, by the way, there are, like, two fountains at Liberty University, so that happened. <laughs> um, <laughs> well played, Liberty, well played. But, uh, no, this is to combat the uh, the attitude of sex positivity and that sex is a healthy and good outside of marriage and blah, blah, blah. So, yes, Christians have found a way to piss on Valentine's Day. That does not surprise me at all. Way to go, Liberty University. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I mean, for the purity rings. Wait, no, they, they can't fuck themselves either because masturbation is also a sin, apparently. Right. Right. Which is because what they fun. say. You, you know, which can't is what... spill your seed on the ground, so. And it's well, that's why you, no, no, you, that's why you get a towel and spill your seed on that. 
Or far. <laughs> far. Yeah. You know, there there are there are ways you cannot spill your seed on the ground. So, you know, you can Are you happy with around... the university? You drove us to talking about masturbation and alternative ways to do it. God. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, hey, you know what? I, I will be happy to provide people at the <laughs> university alternatives to 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 uh, grant them loopholes so they can actually you know get off. So the first time I was on Smarty Stream, I talked about where to get free porn and uh, <laughs> the best place to shop for sex toys. So See, if they want to go out and know. have sex with other people, they should do this instead of having purity T-shirts. They should masturbate and they should give out purity socks instead. There you go. <laughs> Oh, oh, uh. <laughs> oh man. Oh, God. So, yeah, but. That's so gross. <laughs> not going to lie. That's, that's just gross. Yeah. yeah you talk for Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's actually a uh, card in, in the uh, Cards of Humanity packs. No, no, it would totally be Jizzin' for Jesus. <laughs> 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 I, I, I will not name this um, episode um, that it would probably get pissed at me <laughs> yeah you're not allowed to name the episode that but I highly suspect that it's going to be a, in a tweet very shortly here <laughs> probably <laughs> oh, oh but oh god so oh so douche bros uh, I, I, there is something I do want to say to all of these douche bros out there. Coming from used to formerly having that mindset, and, and in all seriousness here, guys, if you calm yourself down, you know you will you it will get better for you. You will find somebody. You just have to be patient. Do not think you are entitled to it just because you're nice to her. Please don't do that. And yes, again. Shamefully, I am speaking from experience. I have thought that, and 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 I got over that. I, I it took a lot of clue bats to the head, which explains where some of my my intelligence went. But it it took a lot of clue bats to the head, and I eventually it got through, and I I backed off, calmed down a bit, concentrated on other things, then you know. I managed to have a few, you know, actually a few girlfriends between the time I actually backed off and now. So it, it does work. You just, you know, cool off, back off a bit, you know. Don't don't be all up over them like, oh my god, you're so hot and everything. Don't go up to them and say, oh my god, your tits are great, you know. Unless they open that forum for you, don't go there. And, and I'm gonna, and I and I know I'm saying things that other people have said, but it, it bears repeating, you know. And, and and this is focused on the guys, but you know if you're you know female listeners, if if you're listening, you know, you I'm sure you can take it and apply it, you know flip flop as well. But um, but you know if a woman doesn't open the forum to compliments about certain body parts at any time, or if you're not at that point to where you know you two are comfortable talking that way to each other, don't do it. Don't if you do must. It on the first conversation, biohybrid. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I wasn't going to call out names, but okay. Look, <laughs> Doesn't make it any less true. This, Doesn't make it any less true, though. This isn't the first time I've called out him on this show, so there's I that. Know. On my show. <laughs> yeah. Hey, but... you, you, you do the crime, you got to be called out for it. I'm sorry. Like, people need to know that there are people out there that they know that are like this. Yes. Oh, but... No matter how much they try to hide it. Exactly. Which is... Uh, which which is a bad thing, you know, a bad thing about life. But the thing is, with these people, they can get better, and they should get better. I encourage them to get better. Even even Biohybrid, if he's listening, you can get better, dude. All of all of you can get better. And not just trying for like a month and then thinking that you've gotten better, and then you find you find someone that you think is hot, and that you know you could you know. And by the way, this is it's that he could get. Because, yes, because all women are objects to be had, to be gotten, to be gained. Totally. Oh, totally. You know, whatever. <laughs> um, Maybe and are not machines you put kindness coins into until sex falls out. I like that quote. I saw that last week, and I'm like, yes. Uh, but, yeah, don't don't just try. And then, like, it, 
here's the thing. A lot of guys try being nice, and then, then when they and then they try to get a girl by being nice. Once they do, you know, they, they 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 get a hang of the whole nice thing. Then they use it, try to get close to a girl, and then they don't. They end up they end up not being into them or whatever for whatever reason, and then they they feel like they failed, and then they revert back to their old ways. Yeah, which it's a vicious cycle. You need to break it. Nobody can break it but you. Nobody. I can't do it. None of, none of the ladies here can do it. The, the the hot chick that you like ogling over on Facebook can't do it. You have to do it yourself. I'll break and, it by it. I mean your dick if you try it anymore. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I but, regret nothing. There you go. But but in all seriousness, again, I'm just just to kind of wrap up and reiterate a lot of the things I've said. Ease it up. You know, if if, if you're lonely. You know, it's it's fine to say, yeah, I'm lonely. I, I, I'm you know feeling this way or what have you. That's fine. You you've got to let it out. Don't keep it. Don't do not. You don't have to keep it to yourself. Write it in a journal. There are blog. There are blogging sites you can go to. You can let it out. That's fine. But don't sit there and be oh I'm lonely. I'm lonely. I'm lonely. When you're using friendship to try and get sex out of a girl. Keep it in your pants. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Plus nobody likes. Poor pitiful me. Right. Like it, the same for if girls, you have so. any doubts about why you're single, but you're going, oh poor me, I'm single, and you know, screw everybody who's in a happy relationship. Like yeah. this yeah. holiday is crap. You guys should love each other every day. Right. You know, yeah. Uh, and, most and... people will feel like that that is true, but that doesn't mean that they don't want to do something special. <laughs> and we're not going to be miserable for you on Valentine's Day. We're not going to have purposeful emo day. No. Just for you, yeah. it was for in you know relationship, and I want to I want to say this too. Again, it works both ways, girls, and I'm guilty of this too because back before I started being noticed by people, um, I was I always had the the poor me. I'm just the girl next door type that no guy wants to date. Blah blah blah. Well, I can't this guy see this because I'm such a I'm I'm a good person, but you know, I was, well I'm just terrible because I'm not hot. Blah blah blah. I used to be that way, so it works. It works both ways. It yeah. works both ways. Exactly. So, uh, with that, um, do we have any final thoughts on well, just anything this week? Um, don't be a douche and happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> <laughs> um, that sum it up for for uh, you for uh, you and in and there. I I I I English good. I English good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but um, but yeah. So uh, I I suppose that that is a good enough uh, sum up as any, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I would like to add, like, yes, that Valentine's Day is a good reason to go out and do something special with your significant other. But don't wait for Valentine's Day. Yeah, if that's the day, only day you can do so, do it then. If you can do it any other day of the year, do it then as well. Just, yeah. You know. Yes. And uh, plus, you know, discount chocolate is awesome. Damn right. Right, girl. Damn yes. I'm, I'm about any holiday that comes with candy so yay right. which, i'm with you is, there wait so you that means most of them right we, pretty much yes yeah do it i don't think that's true but fourth of july has fireworks so i'm i'm willing to let that go <laughs> yeah it's it evens out. You may not get chocolate, but you get awesome floaty things in the sky. Yes. yes. Awesome explosions. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and wrap up for this week. Hopefully you'll have some awesome explosions on Valentine's Day. I hope yes. so. Too. <laughs> <laughs> may, may all your Valentine's Day explosions be wonderful. <laughs> no matter how you get them. <clears throat> so. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, whether you're dissing for Jesus or with somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> yes. We've... Oh my god. <laughs> and that's that's a hell of a way to end the show too. This way Holly this week Holly broke me. Good yeah. job. <laughs> <laughs> you knew it was gonna happen eventually. Yep. Yes. So, uh, anyways, we were going to get out of here for this week on that note. Um, again, happy Valentine's Day. I hope everybody that's listening to this on Valentine's Day is having a good one. Uh, if you're one of those that we were kind of bitching at at the end, um, 
Oh. Yeah, uh, do, do use Misha's phrase here, I regret nothing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, and it's true, Ta please take it to heart, please. Um, if you want to, yeah. If you want to find us on social medias and everything, you can find me at gomer 21 X on Twitter. You can also find my stuff on rtgomer.com and nerdvice.com. And if you want you if you want to help support the site and these productions and everything, you know, for upgrades and everything, then uh, just hit up my Patreon page, patreon.com slash gomer 21 X. Money will go towards the site, productions, and whatever is needed in order to keep these shows coming out, keep the lights on, etc. Um, and uh, I do I do want to update on that though. I did get my uh, income tax return back, and right now the site is maintained at, at the basic uh, one hundred dollar thing. Um, if if we do make it to that goal on the Patreon, then what that will do is we'll go towards you know next year's site upkeep because thankfully it's only yearly. So, but I wanted to share that because it's awesome. Yes, so we don't have to worry so much about the site you know just kind of backsliding a bit. Like I was fearing. So, but again, as I said, the money will go towards site and different productions predominantly. So uh, there is that. Uh, Holly, where can we find you? Uh, you can find me at GookyGox, G O O K Y G O X, on Twitter and Tumblr and all of those wonderful things. Um, my Etsy store is gookygox.etsy.com. Um, for the next few days, the Find a Tweet Heart account will be active on Twitter. So, if you want to tweet heart for Valentine's Day, send your info, you know, your age, gender, and what you're looking for there, and I'll retweet it. Um, we still have one couple who is dating a year and a half later. So it did, it has actually brought people together <laughs> who, who ended up staying together. So, yes. uh, yeah. And, and do then, not be fooled by imitators. There have been imitators. <laughs> as of yesterday, you can find me around Nerdvice. Yes, because because you are now you're now what the, the head editor over on Nerdvice yep. now, so it's like yay. Mm -hmm. Oh, Misha. Okay, well, on Twitter I am Misha underscore Mayhem. You can also find uh, Snarkcast, Snark Sports, and Bacon Strippers there as well on Facebook. Um, you can read my articles on the Gomer site. and I am on Tumblr at uh, my name on there is Misha Mayhem eighty four. Sweet. And Danny, where can we find you if people were to want to say hello to you? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Danny Amigurumi, D-A-N-N-I-E-A-M-I-G-U-R-U-M-I. -I -E mm -hmm. And <laughs> Amigurumi is a Japanese word for a knitted or crocheted toy. Oh, sweet. I, I figured it was Japanese. I just didn't know what it meant. I learned something today. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and yes. And you can also find me on Tumblr at oyarnit, all is one word, spelled exactly how you would think. Oh, and that's I also... you! Yeah, yeah. I'm o... yeah, I'm oyarnit on Tumblr. Yay! Hey. And, <laughs> and uh, I also have a blog spot where I post uh, crochet patterns. Uh, it's the same thing, oyarnit.blogspot.com. <laughs> and I have actually published two of my own Pokemon patterns on there. Sweet! Cool. Yeah, a uh, Clefairy and Chandelure. Oh, nice. Do you put your stuff on Ravelry, too? Uh, I have a Ravelry, but I don't use it very often. <laughs> it, it, it's, just, it's a little tiny bit confusing for me, and I don't know how to do the PDF thing of it. Uh, so I, if I were to use it, I would just uh, link out to my blog spot for that because it's easier. Yeah. So, uh, all right. So that is it for this week. Thank you guys for listening. Thank you for putting up with, with, with waiting a week, especially, you know, after the uh, Juario tribute the last time, which I, I'm thankful. I'm, I'm, I do want to thank everybody for, you know, their comments on that one and, and checking it out. Uh, it is much appreciated. Um, but um, with that, we're going to, like I said, we're going to get out of here. Finally, get out of here. <laughs> um <laughs> And until next time, this is Gomer the Ranting Thespian with Holly Christine Misha Mayhem and Danny Amigurumi signing off. Bye. See ya. Bye, guys.